everyone welcome back once again in your biology class this is nausin and you are watching educational support if you like this video then press a subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it and you have turned on all the notifications on your phone so that you don't miss a single video so please watching till the end of my video in my previous video i was sharing tuberculosis part 1 in that class we were learn definition of tuberculosis how is tuberculosis spread causative organisms for tuberculosis common symptoms of tuberculosis so if you anyone miss tuberculosis part 1 video then visit my youtube channel educational support a link of this video is given in my description box below so go for it and subscribe my channel today we are going to learn about tuberculosis part 2 in this class we will learn what are the pathophysiology of tuberculosis diagnosis of tuberculosis and what are the preventive measures of tuberculosis so i recommend that you dear sit down with a notebook and a pen before we start going through this topic so let us see the tuberculosis part 2 first of all we are going to focus on steps of the pathophysiology of tuberculosis primary infection or initial infection as you know that tuberculosis is an infectious disease usually caused by mycobacterium tuberculi bacteria and this mycobacterium tuberculosis is mainly responsible for tuberculosis so among the approximately 10% of infected individuals who develop active disease about half will do so within the first 2 to 3 years and are described as developing rapidly progressively or primary disease the tubercle bacilli establish infection in the lungs after they are carried in the droplets among small enough that is 5 to 10 microns to reach the alveolar space if the defense system of the host fails to eliminate the infection the bacilli proliferate inside alveolar macrophages and eventually kills the cells the infected macrophages produced cytokines and chemokines that attract other phagocytic cells including monocytes and other alveolar macrophages and neutrophils which eventually form a nodular granulomatous structure called the tubercle if the bacterial replication is not controlled the tubercle enlarges and the bacilli enter the local draining lymph nodes and then starts replication inside the macrophages and then primary infection occurs so the this leads to lymphadenopathy and this is a 
कैरेक्टरिस्टिक क्लिनिकल मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ द प्राइमरी ट्यूबोक्यूलोसिस सो नेक्स्ट इज न्यू टिश्यू मासेज ऑफ लाइफ एंड डेड बैसली आर सराउंडेड बाय मैक्रोफैजेस व्हिच फॉर्म अ पोटेटिव मास अराउंड ग्रैनुलोमास एंड द लेशन प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय द एक्सपेंशन इनटू द लंग पैरेंकाइमा एंड लिम्फ नोड इन्वॉल्वमेंट इज कॉल्ड द गॉन कॉम्प्लेक्स सो बैक्टीरियोमिया may accompany initial infection and the bacilli continue to proliferate until an effective cell mediated immune response drop develops so usually 2 to 6 weeks after infection here is a picture and this is the picture of states of pathophysiology of tuberculosis so viewers if you enjoyed this video or learned anything then press a like button and don't forget to subscribe If you anyone miss my previous videos then visit my YouTube channel educational support a link of these videos are given in my description box below so go for it and subscribe my channel next we are going to focus on diagnosis of tuberculosis or how is pulmonary tuberculosis diagnosed so there are few common tests for tuberculosis that are quantiferon gold test sputum culture test radiography chest x-ray test tuberculin skin test and acid fast bacillus aab test so first is quantiferon gold test do you know what is quantiferon gold test quantiferon gold test is a simple blood test in the detection of mycobacterium tuberculosis and the bacteria which causes tuberculosis so quantiferon gold test is an interferon gamma release assay and is a modern alternative to the tuberculin skin test next is sputum culture test do you know what is sputum culture test so one of the best ways to diagnose tuberculosis is through a sputum culture test a sputum culture can take 1 to 8 weeks to provide results and uh, sputum culture is a test to find germs that can cause an infection germs that is tuberculosis bacteria and a simple sputum is added to a substances that promotes the growth of bacteria if no bacteria grow the culture is negative and if bacteria grow then the culture is positive so if tuberculosis bacteria grow then the person has tuberculosis next text is radiography so radiography that means chest x ray and this chest x ray or ct scan to take look for changes 
in your lungs. Next text is tuberculin skin test. So do you know what is this? This is also known as the skin test. Did you know what is the basic technique of this test? Basically, a technician inject 0.1 ml of tuberculin PPD into the skin of the forearm. After 48 to 72 hours check for induration at the side and they will check for swelling in your arm. Diagnosis is based on the size of the wheel and if induration is equal to or more than 10 mm then positive and you probably have tuberculosis bacteria. So this picture basically represents a pathogenesis of tuberculin test. So next test is acid fast bacillus test that are AFB test. So acid fast bacillus test for tuberculosis bacteria in your sputum and the mucus that comes up when you cough. Next we are discussing can tuberculosis be cured? In the 20th century, tuberculosis was a leading cause of death in the United States. Today, most cases are cured with antibiotics, but it takes a long time. You have to take medications for at least 6 to 9 months. Here is the preventive measures of tuberculosis or how to prevent pulmonary tuberculosis. It can be difficult to avoiding uh, contracting TB if you work in an environment frequented by people with tuberculosis or if you are caring for a friend or family member with tuberculosis. So following are a few tips for minimizing your risks for pulmonary tuberculosis that are wearing a mask, vaccinations that is BCG vaccine, regular medical checkup, Cover the mouth properly, isolation of the patient, ventilation, gain a natural sunlight, lead a happy and healthy lifestyle and take lots of fruits, vegetables and maintain a healthy diet and do a adequate exercise per day regularly. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. So keep watching and keep learning. If you guys have any kind of inquiry, then in my comment section you can tell me and put down a comment under this video because this will help me to improve better. So subscribe this video, like and share it with your friends and also press the bell icon right next to it and happy watching. To know more about biology related topics then keep visiting educational support and follow me on my Facebook page. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support and see you in the next video. Bye bye.